forward here. And the rectifier bridge makes use of something called a diode. It could, if we wanted to be super simple with it, use only one diode, but we want to be smart about it and get the most amount of power out of this that we can, so we use a series of diodes sending electricity in only one direction. So, um, so th things to remember. Um, a minimum of four diodes are required to create what's called full wave rectified current. We'll look more at that, so don't stress if you don't write down exactly what I said. But to create full wave rectified current, we need four diodes. Diodes are dipolar devices which allow electricity to travel in one direction. What do we call something that um, lets electricity flow easily? Like a copper wire conductor, what do we call things that do not allow electricity to flow? Uh, close, but the so resistors like uh, resist it, right? Um, something that was the best resistor would be a, a, an insulator, right? No, allowing no electricity to flow at all, right? So you either have, in this, in this simplified idea, you either have conductors or insulators, right? Well, a diode works as a conductor in one direction, but as soon as you try to send electricity the other direction, it works as an insulator. It's, it's, it's a stop sign in one direction, but a green light going the other way. Okay. How does that work? I'm gonna show you. It's really, it's really, really neat how it works. Um, it's, I, I find it really cool. But let me, um, let me say their notes and then I'll talk about the rectifiers, or the, the diodes. So they say, note, in this bridge layout, no matter which way electricity enters the bridge, you'll see electricity entering the bridge from the, it's like a diamond shape, right? So from the top and the bottom, AC current comes in, and from the sides of the diamond shape, the direct current comes out. So no matter which way electricity comes in, alternating current always um, is converted to direct current coming out. It can only exit below toward the X-ray tube filament. Let's zoom in just a little bit on this. So current coming in this way, okay, cannot go this way. So if you get, so remember, so remember alternating current sends it this way, that way, this way, that way, back and forth, right? Let's just for an instant talk about electricity coming through this way. So from left towards right, right? It's gonna travel down here and um, for that split second traveling in that direction, it's going to try to go both ways, okay, in through it, it, this way and that way. But the diodes only allow it to go that way. So the electricity is going to get to here. It's going to want to go down this way, but it can't because the arrow is pointing that way, okay? We'll look at what the diodes actually do when this happens in a moment, but electricity can only travel that way, okay? Now looking in from the bottom. So... For some period of time, the electricity was traveling that direction, right? But then the alternating current flips around and now goes the other way. So now you're looking from the bottom, okay? When the ultra AC has flipped around, now the current's going to try to come in from the bottom, okay? Go up. It's going to want to go both directions, okay? But the diode only allows it to go to the left, not to this through this diode on the right. This diode is functioning like an insulator at this moment in time. This diode is functioning as a conductor, okay? And as the current shifts back and forth, these diodes sort of switch roles back and forth between conductor and insulator. All the while, notice the diodes direct electricity only in one direction, out this end. It always comes out this end, down, and through the x-ray tube this way. Electricity is never allowed to go through the diodes because the way there's the rectifier bridge, because the way the diodes are set up, electricity is never allowed to travel across the x-ray tube the opposite direction. It can't happen. Okay? So in this next few slides, we'll look at the diodes, what in them allows them to, to change their function back and forth depending on the direction. The direction that electricity travels changes how the diodes act. Okay. So 
So these diodes, referred to as solid state rectifiers. Solid state means there's no moving parts. Okay. So these are nice. These are cool devices. Um, we said that things that conduct electricity well are called conductors. Things that do not conduct electricity are called insulators. What we didn't say, what we have said in previous lectures, are things that act like both change how they function under different conditions are called semiconductors. Okay? Semiconductors like silicon, there's other examples like selenium, but silicon is probably the best example. There's an entire area called Silicon Valley where all the computer advancements are, are taking place, right? So silicon's really popular. So there's two types in, 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 a, in a diode. There's what's called the N type or the side we call the N side. And then there's their P type or the side we call the P side. Okay, so N type and P type. Now, the N side of things, don't worry about what N and P means, just we'll give them their labels. The N type side, shown on the left here, has loosely bound electrons that are free to flow. So if you send current towards the N side, okay, so from N to P, current flows freely. Okay. The P side has vacancies in the outer shells of the electrons. We call them holes. Okay. So the P side does not have loosely bound electrons. The P side has a bunch of atoms that are lacking electrons that would love to get to get and hang on to extra electrons. And a diode is made by having an N side and a P side connected, forming a uh, a connection in the middle, a junction, we call the NP junction. And is that just where the two different materials meet? Yes, yeah. And these two different materials will, in the next slide you'll see, they will do something interesting with each other when current goes one direction and they'll stop doing that when current tries to go back the other direction. So here's what it looks like. When, uh, so I'll read it first, and we'll try to you know show it. But when electricity approaches from the N side, moving on this screen from left to right, the electrons are repelled from the electric current. So if you zoom in here, the N side current moving from left to right, the electrons are repelled from the electric current moving toward the N side. Why would electrons be repelled from electric current? Right, and we know what do we know about charges and attraction and repulsion? Opposites Opposite charges attract, and like charges repel. So the end side being filled with loosely bound free to flow electrons, they're going to try to move in the same direction that the current is moving. They're acting like a conductor, okay? And what they'll do is they will move up to the junction. They can't move past the junction because the junction is. Um, is a different material, okay? So the, these electrons are shown moving up against the middle, against the junction. Well, on the P side of the junction are a bunch of atoms. The junk, that P material is made of atoms that do not have electrons in their outer shells and would be happier if they had electrons in their outer shells. What would be the charge of an atom that was neutral and you took away some electrons from it? You took away some negative charge from an atom. Its net charge would be what? Positive. Positive, right? So all of these uh, atoms on the P side have a net positive charge, okay? And they, uh, we know about opposite charges attract, right? So when those electrons are pushed from the N side towards the NP junction, all of the atoms on the P side are attracted to the electrons on the uh, N side, okay? So they connect. When they connect, they create something called a potential bridge. All the atoms and the electrons line up together, allowing the electricity now to flow freely from left to right, to flow through the NP junction, through the P side of the material, and continue on through the wire. Current is allowed to flow at this put through the potential bridge and across no problems when current moves from left to right are those is it, are they only composed of silicon 
the ones that I'm talking about, as far as I know, yes. But I know you can, there's many different semiconductors. Because I would have thought it would be like two different elements. It's just two different formulations of silicon, as far as, oh, okay. as, far as I know. So, okay. yeah, so they can take and change the properties of these semiconductors. And silicon happens to be one that's easy to do that with, or useful to do that with, and give it same material with two different properties. Same. Same elements, Same elements, but giving the materials that you make out of them two different properties. Okay. That's the way. That's the way I, I think about it, at least. Um, good. But in principle, yeah, you can make a different semiconductor out of different materials and still have a functioning diode. So I bet you, if you looked up different types of diodes, they're not all made of silicon. You know, but the ones that at least to give us an example are. Okay. Cool. So remember, 60 hertz alternating current, right? So it takes for one 120th of a second. Current is moving from left to right, okay? And during that time, moving from left to right, current gets to flow freely from left to right. However, as soon as the current switches now to move from right to left, those uh, atoms on the P side, which were attracted to the electrons, which had lined up along the wall of the N side of the junction, those atoms will now be attracted toward the, po the, the negative charge of the current. So the current shifts directions back this way. Negative current moving this way will pull all of those positively charged atoms toward it and away from the potential bridge. Okay, making now a block, a blocked off area here, where um, which functions as a as an insulator. Okay, so as current travels this way, these guys separate now, going back to their respective ends, okay, and now this uh, diode now functions as a resistor when the current tries to move from right to left. So moving from left to right, from N to P, current flows freely. Going from P to N, current does not flow, flow freely, so there is no current coming out this side of it when electricity tries to travel the other direction. Said in another way, we have now rectified the negative waveform. We've taken away one of the waveforms, okay, from that, from this, um, you guys recall the positive and negative wave, right? We've taken away the negative wave, and now we're just going to have positive waves, okay? Meaning that we have now electricity traveling only in one direction. The downside of it is, if you only use one of these, then half of the time you're not using, you're wasting half of your electricity. Yeah, I was gonna okay. say, so it's so I mean, it stops right there. It yes, just, it just stops it. So yes. What not, nothing's really happening in the center. It's just kind of like a wall. I just hit a wall. It's a wall. Yeah. And the the positive electrons that are in the P uh, is it just like a positive electron wall that's stopping everything there. The, uh, these two have to target. connect at the middle uh -huh. in order for uh, in order for current to flow at all. Mm -hmm. And when these ones are dragged away from the middle towards this negative current, we now have an insulator. Current will only flow across this uh, across this junction when these two are attracted to each other. So and when, you're, when you're when you're pulling the positives in that direction, so away from the center, then the negative there's there's no charge there it's just, it's just the negative that's... no charge these kind of just go back to where they were okay. they're showing these guys repelled this way because they're repelling away from the negative current yeah. traveling this way oh, okay. Okay. The electrons are always going to try to move away from the current they'll put it in another way the electrons will always move in the same direction as the current is going uh -huh. okay and these guys will always be attracted in the opposite direction that the current is going okay, okay. Because of these different, um, the difference in the way these work, current can only flow one way. So if you had, um, if you only had one of these, right? If you just put one diode, one diode, right? You can make what's called half wave rectified current. You just take away the negative waveform, and now you have electricity only going in one direction, but half of the time nothing's happening. Okay. On the rectifier bridge, uh, ignore this for the moment. Um, on this rectifier bridge, we had four diodes being used in a special configuration. So now, um, with the four diodes, during both phases of alternating current, back and you know 
toward positive or away from positive, both phases back and forth, positive and negative waves, are both repurposed, are both used. Okay, positive wave gets used, so does the negative wave. The negative wave just acts now like a positive wave. If we wanted to um, have something, you know, a little more complicated, you know, have a three-phase x-ray machine, which we will talk about and elaborate on, you might need six or 12 diodes rather than the four that we need in a standard type of x-ray machine. Okay, so those are our diodes. We showed you how it's configured so that we can use the full waveform, the full alternating waveform, and create direct current. So now let's talk about our generators.